You have your 6HEV2 yet because we are actively shipping right now. They're all going out of the fulfillment center at, well, I wish to say lightning speed, but it's not lightning speed, but they're all going out really fast. And this is the first time that we've actually done shipment straight after a founders campaign, which I'm really proud of that we're actually doing that this time. And I hope we can keep doing that in the future. Now you might've seen in the hub some day changes happening uh, during this time before the shipments and during the shipments. And it all has to do with our system, not 100% aligned with this idea of shipping immediately after a campaign, but you should be seeing some accurate dates right now. And I just hope you're gonna receive it as soon as possible. Yeah, it's gonna rock! A big thing I wanna talk about in this update is a new software update that also came with the 6HEV2. And there are two big things in there, one of which we've released and one of them that we're holding in a beta. So the first thing that we released is the background service in a new software update. And the background service is a big thing because it is a utility running in the background, talking with your keyboard. And you might be thinking, oh my God, Calder, it doesn't mean software bloat. Yeah, 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 yes, but no, actually no. No! It is a little service in the background that doesn't bloat up and it is completely optional. So let me explain a little bit more and then you'll get a better idea of what to expect. Whenever you open up the utility, it opens up a communication channel between the computer and the keyboard that can do everything we want with the keyboard. Whereas usually when you connect the keyboard to a computer, it can only talk in keyboard language, which is very restricted, very limited. And we try to do everything we can within the keyboard, but there are certain things that we really need to communicate with the computer about to do things, such as making it more convenient for you to change your settings on the keyboard with this nice interface. As soon as you close the utility, however, that communication channel is gone, and we can only run the things within the keyboard itself. And there are certain things we can't know from the computer, such as, what is your RAM usage? What is your current volume level? What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? So if we want to do some more advanced features, we need to keep that communication channel open. And to keep that open is what we call the background service. The RAM usage and the volume levels is something that you can now start to show on your Wooting ATHE with the LED bar. And in the future, we want to add profile linking. And profile linking is basically whenever and whatever application you open, your keyboard immediately switches to the profile that you assign for that application. And then there are other features that we're planning to roll out that require a background service that are more advanced that you can just not do on the keyboard it's on its own. Whenever you require the background service to run a certain feature, it will tell you, hey, it requires the background service. And in the utility settings, you can completely turn off the background services. So you don't need any of this, just leave it off. But if you want to use one of those features that does require the background service, you can turn it on and it's there. So it's completely up to you if this is something you want or do not want. Now, there are some smaller additional cool features in this new update. One of them is that you can now name your keyboard. So you can go into the utility, name your keyboard, and then whenever and wherever you connect it, it will carry that name with it. So whenever you open the utility, it will still have that name. It's on your keyboard. And the second one that's very cool it's a good quality of life improvement. You can now start copying settings from one profile to another profile. So maybe a whole function layer, your mapping of a certain profile. You can now copy specific settings of one profile and then paste it into your other profile. It's very convenient to quickly make new profiles and take things from different profiles. It's very cool. Now, if you want to see more of these details or other included updates in this update, <laughs> then you can see the utility change log online for those details. The second thing that has not released with this one, which we kind of wanted to release with this one, but it needs a little bit more time and is in beta, that is the switch selector. The switch selector is basically a tool for us to give you a more precise keyboard performance. So for all the HE keyboards, there are a lot of different magnet switches out there that you can use inside the keyboard, but every magnet switch has two essential differences. One, the total range of the switch, and two is the magnet strength of the magnet inside, which is expressed in Gauss. If either the total range is different or the Gauss values are much different from our standard, then it will cause less precision in what we say the distance is gonna be for what is the actual distance. So if in the utility you say, hey, I want this to actuate at one millimeter, maybe it will activate at 1.2 millimeter instead because it's too far off of our standards. However, it is still very accurate in that every time you press the key, it will 
always activate at the 1.2 millimeter. But now we're a bit focused on precision, making sure that when we say one millimeter, it is one millimeter. With our Lekker ticking switches, of course, it's not a problem, and anything that gets close to it, it is not a problem. But there are a lot of switches out there that have the 3.5 millimeter and also have different Gauss values. And that's what we have now the switch selected for. You can now precisely say which switch you have installed where on the keyboard, and then we can change our algorithm a bit so you get that same precision as you would get with Lekker ticking switches with your other switches. So when you say one millimeter activation point, it will be actually one millimeter activation point. So then to burn this in your mind is that our keyboard will always, no matter what switch you install, be very accurate. So every time you press it, it will have the same result. But with the switch selector, we increase the precision so that what we say in the utility is also what's actually happening on the keyboard. The switch selector is soon going to come to public, but we had to keep it in beta because there's still some things that we have to fix to make sure it runs super, super stable. And finally, we're getting to the end of the year and that means that we're going to have some Christmas events and also an end of the year live stream. On the 30th of January we're going to have an end of the year live stream and for the Christmas events these are all happening on Discord. So if you're interested in any of this head over to our Discord, look at the announcements and there'll be more information there when we get closer. But just so that you know we do have these events. I will see you in the next update. Pika pika!